Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some CSS tricks, including CSS transitions. Um, recently my class was uh, making small galleries, adding photos to a web page, and I just wanted to share a couple little uh, CSS tricks that they probably haven't used in the past. So I found some really cool photos over at uh, Jake Z's uh, Flickr Creative Commons page. Uh, looks like a regatta yacht race looks pretty cool it took some nice photos so I've grabbed some uh, some photos from him and I've put together a little menu here where a person can hover over the thumbnail so to speak it's kinda like a thumbnail even though it's technically not a thumbnail and they can see the larger version of the photograph on hover so it's just a little slide effect here and we've got one that's kinda of vertically oriented or will slide down and I've also got a uh, horizontally oriented one that'll slide to the right and a little difference with the slide to the right, you'll notice that the text describing the picture doesn't pop up until after the image expands. Oh, there we go. So you kind of see that effect. That's what we're going to work on here. So I've already got my editor open, and I do have my page, but I don't want you to see the finished page so much. So I'm going to go through and take out a bunch of content here, so we're kind of starting from scratch. Uh, I will leave in a couple things. I, I have a rule controlling... Uh, all elements basically this is my CSS reset rule I want to keep that in that's pretty good here's a simple rule for the body of my page where I'm controlling the background color and adding the padding to the page and I'm setting the font to a sans serif font Arial I have a container the container is not doing anything functional really um, it's got a background color a border I'm using a little bit of border radius I am not using browser specific prefixes on my selector here so just so you know but border radius works in all the top browsers I think IE not uh, IE is still a little bit off but it's, it's getting better and I've got a min height not for any main reason so there's some container rules I'll go ahead and leave those in headline one is simply aesthetic stuff um, I've got the paragraph that gives credit to the uh, photographer and that's off to the right I'll go ahead and keep that in there anchor tags and things like that and now I get to the rules that are actually controlling the menu and these are the things that I really want to get rid of um, so I'll go ahead and delete all of this stuff just nix all of that and of course that's gonna have a tremendous impact on the display of my uh, website here so if I go ahead and uh, refresh this now all I'm left with are straightforward links over here so I'm definitely at a beginning point. Let's look at the HTML real quick. Uh, I don't think I'm going to delete my HTML because this would be one of the first things that I'd type and it would go right back in. But uh, let's check it out. So of course in the body of my page I've got a div controlling my container. My closing div is down here at the bottom. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can see this. Um, headline 1. I've got my paragraph for uh, Jake Z. And then I've got two unordered lists. These are my navigation menus. And I've uniquely identified each of them just so I could control each of them independently on my web page. But otherwise, their structure is very, very similar. There are simply a, a set of list items. And within those list items, I have anchor tags. And uh, those anchor tags, of course, are where my images are. Each of my anchor tags is uniquely identified. So I've given them a unique identification so I can set their various background images. So I have uh, FO1, 2, and 3, and then I have 5, 6, and 7. You're probably wondering where 4 is. Well, when I first did my demo, I uh, had four images each, but because of my small-scale recording, I wanted to take one out. So I took out 4 and 8. But uh, it works with 3, it works with 4, works with 2, works with 10. So I've got my basic images here, and or at least my basic unordered list. So this is kind of an important step and since each of my images is somewhat unique I wanted to give each one a unique identification and those identifications are on the anchor tags and there's my list items. So let's go ahead and uh, get to work on this. I'm going to head back up to my HTML, actually to my CSS. Let's see. This is where I really want to start getting into my work. And one of the first things I want to do is simply set um, the characteristics of my list items. My list items are a bulleted list and you can't tell right away so if I go back to my browser you can't see that these are just bulleted lists and the bullets are actually hidden off screen. You can't see the bullets either because of that reset rule. 
If I didn't have a reset rule, this would look even more like a, a bulleted list. Let me give you a quick little example of that. So if I cut my reset rule out, save this, go to my browser, and refresh, there you go. You have a much more traditional looking bulleted list. So when I set those margins and paddings to zero for all elements, there we go. You just can't see them, but it's still a bulleted list. So I want to go ahead and fix that first. So I'm going to say that for my uh, slide down, this is, you remember, I've got each unordered list uniquely identified. I'll work on one, spending most of the time, and then I'll copy and paste and tweak the slide right one. So, so for slide down list items, I'm going to go ahead and do a list style type none. And I'm going to set a margin of four pixels. And I, I could actually come back and set that margin later. And I think I will just to emphasize what that's doing. But this will get rid of my bullets. Now, while I'm here, I also want to put in the actual background images. So the images that you're going to see, the photographs, are going to be background images. I'm not using any image tags at all. So let me go ahead and grab those. I'm going to pause the screen while I type because it's a lot to type. There we go. I'm back. Now I went ahead and put in the background images for both. So this is a combination of group selector and descendant selector. But basically anchor tag photo 1 within my slide down menu and anchor tag photo 5 within my slide right menu are both going to use the exact same background image. So in anticipation of my next list, I went ahead and put background images in for those. So simple background image CSS property and I'm referring to the images which are stored in a subfolder which is in my images folder which is a subfolder of my current folder so those are my images that I'm using I'm still here on the CSS the only thing I've done is got rid of the bullets for the list items and now I've added the background images or the the desired photos to the anchors within the list items the anchor tags within my menus let's go ahead and do some other stuff that'll really stand out to us so Oops, let's see, my typing's a little bit off here. Slide down, and let's see, let's go ahead and do list items anchors. So this is an important step, and there's going to be quite a few properties here. Um, my anchor tags are the main part that hold the background image, so let's go ahead and work on these. I'm going to make my anchor tags into block elements. I'm going to set their width to 500 pixels, which I happen to know is the width of my um, photographs that I'm using. All my photos are 500 pixels wide. I'm going to set the height to 50 pixels, and this is going to be the starting height for each individual thumbnail, so to speak. I'm going to keep using the word thumbnail, even though I don't actually have separate thumbnail images, but the small version. And I'm going to set a border on these, two pixels solid and I'll do a very light gray that's almost white there and I'm going to do a border radius of 8 pixels now I'm just typing in the border radius property um, if I was doing this for Firefox also I might still do the Moz border radius okay or uh, but I'm testing out with Chrome today so border radius by itself is fine so I'm gonna put a border radius on there and I'm also gonna set the padding to about four pixels. And I'm going to stop here for a second. Let's see how things are looking. Jump over to my browser, which today is Chrome, and I'll refresh, and we can start to see things coming together. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to this little anomaly here on the right, and let's kind of talk about what's happening. Um, what is going on is that I've told you my images, my photographs are 500 pixels wide and my anchor tags, which you can now clearly see with this very light, this white border basically, um, is 500 pixels wide. But by adding the padding, my box is bigger than 500 pixels wide now. So what's, what you're seeing here is my background image is starting to repeat couple ways to fix this. The first one is not a true fix, but I could simply say um, background repeat, no repeat. And that'll keep that background image from repeating. That doesn't solve my problem. I want these anchor tags to actually be 500 pixels wide regardless of the padding. So I'm going to force that issue and I'm going to use box sizing border box. 
basically this is going to tell the browser that I wanted this box to be 500 pixels wide and damn it you're going to make it 500 pixels wide based on border to border that's the width I want regardless of padding so when I save this head back over to my browser and refresh there we go now I know they're exactly 500 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall by the way so that's a it's a cool new CSS property by the way um, if you're doing this in Firefox in fact if you're doing this for, more for real life you would also want to put in the um, literally the uh, the Firefox um, I'm sorry I'm sorry not Firefox the uh, Mozilla or Moz prefix so you'd put in the Moz prefix and possibly the WebKit prefix um, I'm cutting down on my prefixes today uh, simply because I'm using Chrome as my tester and I know that box sizing property by itself works in Chrome so don't forget there's a Moz prefix there's a WebKit prefix that you might need to use from time to time in order to get some of these newer CSS properties to work in individual browsers So that takes care of that um, little issue. Let's go and do a couple other things that are probably a little bit more familiar. Um, I will set the uh, text. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit, make sure you can see that okay. Decoration to none. That's going to get rid of the underlining in my hyperlinks. I'll set the color to black, which is the text color that I've got. And I will set um, text shadow to one pixel offset, one pixel offset, and then I'm going to do um, white, and that's really just to put a white shadow behind my text to make it stand out a little bit better. Okay, so let me save that, let's see how things are looking on Chrome. Alright, so there are my three photos. Now, I would like to space these out a little bit apart, so I'm going to head back over to my editor, I'm going to scroll up to my list items, and I'm actually going to put some margin on my list items margin of four pixels. I was going to do that before but I wanted you to see the effect. So when I put the margin on the list items and refresh I'll get that spacing right in between them which gives me the desired effect that I want. So that's really uh, the initial setup right here and actually we've got a pretty decent looking navigation menu. If these were going to some other page or site no problem you just kind of redo your anchor tags, your hyperlinks and you've got a pretty slick little nav. Let's go ahead and put a few more things in here though just so we can have that slide effect back over to my editor. So I've got this one big rule controlling the anchor tags for my list item. Let's go ahead and add a couple more things. I'm gonna do the uh, slide down. So slide down a colon, I'm sorry, a sharp, fo one colon hover. Okay, so when I hover over my image, what do I want to change? I want to change the height to 336 pixels, which is the known height of my images. And I'm also going to change the border to pixels solid yellow, FF0 is yellow. So when I hover over these images, I'm going to set, um, change the height, change the border. So when I head back over to Chrome and refresh, there we go. So we start to have an effect already. Oops, that's right, I only did the first image. So if I want to do the same kind of thing to my other images, not a, not a real problem. I can just copy this. Do a group select, selector, and I can do photo 2 and photo 3. So basically now, the hover state of photo 1 within slide down, the hover state of photo 2 within slide down, and the hover state of photo 3 within slide down. And once I've taken care of this, save, browser, and refresh, now I've got that slide down for each of the images. And of course it's a fast action right now because I haven't put in the actual transition effect. But we're getting closer, you know, hard part's done. Okay, so one last little trick here, and that'll kind of take care of it. I'm going to head back up to where my anchor tag is, this important rule up here, and I'm going to go ahead and put in WebKit. We do need the WebKit prefix here. Transition. Now, what am I going to change uh, gradually? I'm going to change the height. That's the property I'm going to change. Space, I'm going to do it at 0.8 seconds, which is just under one second. And I'm going to choose an ease out. There's a few, cho uh, few choices here, like linear, ease in, ease out, ease in out, um, Bezier. 
but most of these, you know, I think the eases look pretty good. Linear can kind of look pretty good. Basically, ease in and ease out will start the action fast and slow it down. But since I've only got 0.8 seconds here, that effect is going to be very, very minimally noticed. Um, but that's pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that back over to uh, Chrome, refreshed, and now we're starting to see the effect. Now because I'm doing my transition effect only on the height, notice that my image color jumps really quick. So the, I'm sorry, not the image color, the border color changes instantly. I only wanted the height to change gradually, so that's why I'm using height. As opposed to put changing height to all, I want to change all characteristics. If I refresh this, you'll notice that the border color gradually goes in and out, which maybe you think that's cool, you know? So you could do that also. But for now, I just wanted to change the height of my anchors gradually. So, so that's the effect that I'm going for here. Oh, there we go, got a little too carried away. So this is a hover effect, which means I do need to be on top of the thumbnail in order to see that effect. Um, and you can use some other techniques to keep these static. So there we go. So there's our slide down menu. I see that my tutorial is already getting over 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one and then I will um, continue on and I'll take care of the slide right menu in a second video.